Right around 2015, things were going amazingly well for Under Armour. They were seen by many as this cool, comparatively new athletic brand. They had recently surpassed Adidas to become the second largest brand in the US, and personally, I can say that around that time is when I started seeing that logo everywhere. And that's a good logo too, with the symmetry from the U and the A connected to each other. However you want to measure it, by sales, by profit, by market share, they were one of the fastest growing companies in the country, and then they ran into trouble. Now, I don't want to mislead anybody and make you think that they were barely hanging on by a thread or anything like that, but the brand did start losing some power and things took a considerable turn. When you look at the graph, we can clearly see how much their sales growth slowed down, and then when we isolate the North American sales, their biggest market and likely where most of the people watching this video are, they actually started decreasing and continued to do so through 2020. Meanwhile, Adidas continued growing and took over that number two spot. Also, they started reporting net losses for the first time ever. It caused many investors to lose confidence in the brand, evidenced by how much their stock price fell from its all-time high in 2015. If you had invested $100 in Under Armour at the end of that year, it would not have been a good investment. You'd be down to $41 by the end of 2020, which is much worse than most comparable companies or the market in general. I think we can say that after such an impressive streak, Under Armour found itself in some major trouble, and they've been trying to address it. They went through a series of leadership changes, notably their founder and longtime CEO, Kevin Plank, stepped down from that position in 2019. It was less than a year after they announced this big five-year turnaround plan that has been showing some promise. So in this video, I want to talk about what's been going on with Under Armour, how they grew so large, what went wrong, and how they've potentially been making a comeback. Today, we associate Under Armour with all sorts of athletic apparel and footwear, but the company itself, and the name of it, stems from the invention of a single product. It goes back to the mid-90s, when Kevin Plank was a college football player for the University of Maryland. In short, like everyone else at the time, he was wearing wearing basic cotton t-shirts underneath his football gear and was becoming upset with how ridiculously sweaty they were getting. I mean, that can get so uncomfortable and literally weigh you down to a point where it could start to impact your performance. His solution was to create a new t-shirt out of the synthetic fabric that would be more form-fitting, lighter, and ultimately cooler. He got some help to get the prototype together, tested it out on his teammates, and ended up with a shirt that he felt was promising enough to start a company that would manufacture and sell them. His starting capital was mostly provided through 40 thousand dollars in credit card loans. He would use the money to make the shirts out of his grandmother's townhouse and then attempt to sell them to equipment managers of college sports teams, partially by driving samples out to them using his own car. As far as naming the company, it's kind of funny. He originally wanted to call it Heart and then Body Armor, but had trouble with those trademarks. Then, I guess one day, his brother asked him something like, what's going on with that company of yours? Uh, what's it called? Uh, Under Armour? Like, in a sarcastic way, but Plank liked it so much, he instantly went out to fill the paperwork for it, and that that was it. Oh, and then the reason he put the U in it was so that they would have a more memorable phone number, 888-4-ARMOR. The U was just a tricky way to give them that extra digit that they needed. That was the foundation. His first big sale was to Georgia Tech for around $7,000, contributing to the $17,000 in sales over the first year. That original shirt was branded as Heat Gear, and then he quickly expanded the product lines for other conditions, such as Cold Gear, designed for the cold weather. He continued as a relatively small operation for a couple of years, personally convincing many of the college that these undershirts were what they needed to give them the edge over the competition, but the big break happened in 1999 with the release of a movie called Any Given Sunday. Through a friend of his, Kevin Plank was able to get the people in charge of the wardrobe for that movie to consider some of his samples, and in short, this small company of Under Armour was amazingly prominently featured in the football classic Any Given Sunday. This was a big time movie, directed by Oliver Stone, featuring stars like Al Pacino and Jamie Foxx, it made over over $100 million at the box office. It gave them major publicity. This was the first time that most people had ever even seen the brand. There was a bit of an issue though. The movie was legally not allowed to use real NFL team names, so it featured a fictional team called the Miami Sharks. Well, the concern was that people would assume that Under Armour was also made up for the movie. It was such a unique problem, but they addressed it by quickly launching their first national ad campaign, featuring ads in ESPN magazine to ensure that the public knew that Under Armour was in fact real. 
real. It led to $800,000 in sales within the first few weeks, and they gained even more publicity when they used the same connections to be featured in another football movie the following year called The Replacements. Things just took off from there, helped by memorable ad campaigns like that intense Protect This House commercial in 2003, a public stock offering in 2005, and signing endorsement deals from professional athletes, probably most notable ones being Tom Brady in 2010 and Steph Curry three years later. In fact, when the brand was reaching some of its all-time highs in 2015, you have to think that part of that success was due to Tom Brady and Steph Curry both winning championships in that same year. Now, we're getting to the sad part of the video where the brand loses momentum and everything starts to fall. There was a lot going on around this time, so I've compiled a list of five reasons that I think help explain what happened to Under Armour. First off, in early 2016, the sporting goods store Sports Authority filed for bankruptcy and closed all of its stores within the next six months. That, of course, proved to be harmful for Under Armour because those 450 stores were a major outlet for their stuff. People were buying their Under Armour products from Sports Authority, and now that they were gone, it was impacting their sales. That part's pretty straightforward, but it leads to my next reason, discounting. By 2017, I get the sense that Under Armour was in a bit of a panic, which is understandable, right? Their stock price had just plummeted, their sales were struggling partially because they had lost one of their major outlets, so things were getting desperate to get those sales back on track. That was likely the motivation for them to start making the products available in more retail outlets, such as Kohl's. The third-party arrangements meant less control over the brand, so now when Kohl's decides to mark down the price for whatever reason, it kind of cheapens the brand and makes people less willing to pay a premium for it. Basically, to try to quickly repair sales, they were willing to compromise their reputation by selling their stuff for less. My third reason behind their decline would be their accounting issues. Again, everything was falling apart over at Under Armour, so they were desperate to report some good sales figures, and in this case, resorted to some sketchy accounting practices to inflate those numbers. The SEC concluded that in the second half of 2015, right when there were some signs of trouble, Under Armour started shipping orders way ahead of schedule so that they can kind of pull those sales forward and record them before the quarter ends to make up for them actually being lower than they had predicted. Or to put it in a more simple way, they manipulated their accounting to mislead the public and their investors into thinking that they were selling more than they actually were. It happened over six quarters in the amount of $400 million, and in the end, there was a $9 million settlement paid. Obviously, yet another ill-advised way to address their troubles that only made things worse. The next reason I have on my list is some aspects of their corporate culture that were put into question around this time. I guess the most famous one being in 2018, when it was exposed that the company would often reimburse their employees after visiting strip clubs. Kevin Plank himself was even among these people that would be reimbursed. They did put an end to it, saying that they would work toward making their workplace more respectful and inclusive, but it was a big story, and I'm sure many people think less of the brand because of it. Then finally, my last reason behind their decline would be their avoidance of athleisure clothing. In case you're not familiar with the term, athleisure has become a big trend in fashion. It's defined as casual clothing designed to be worn both for exercising and for general use. Competitors like Nike and Adidas have taken full advantage of it, while Under Armour has, for the most part, avoided it. Their focus has been much narrower, targeting serious athletes with clothing that emphasizes performance rather than comfort. Honestly, it's hard to say what the right answer is here. I think it's smart to have a unique identity and to avoid sacrificing it for a trend like that, but on the other hand, many people have criticized them for it, saying they're essentially leaving money on the table. There are people out there that would buy it, so why not just sell it? And then, of course, during the pandemic, this decision made them especially exposed. The sports league shut down, the gyms closed, meanwhile, so many people were lounging around the house. I'm just saying, it was a much better time to be selling athleisure rather than performance clothing. So I think that's a decent account of where things went wrong over at Under Armour, but things may be getting better. As I mentioned earlier, they've been bringing in new executives and following this five-year recovery plan that's been showing signs of hope. Obviously, the gym's reopening and everything along those lines has been helpful, but aside from that, they've been working towards strengthening the brand and lowering their costs with the goal of becoming profitable again. They were all set to spend a lot of money on this big flagship store in New York City, but delayed the plans for it. They've been ending many of their college sponsorships, such as the $280 million deal that they had with UCLA. They ended this multi-million dollar a year licensing deal with the NFL. And then as far as strengthening the brand, they set plans to stop selling their stuff at 2,000 to 3,000 retailers across the country in favor of taking control and selling it directly to consumers through their website and through their physical Under Armour stores. I also want to mention that they sold their app called My Fitness Pal actually at a loss. That app was more geared toward casual everyday fitness, so it suggests that they're moving even more toward the market of the serious athletes, doubling down on a strategy that many have criticized, but there could 
could be a long-term benefit there. And so far, it seems like these efforts have been effective. Their North American sales in 2021 had their first increase and are at their highest since their peak in 2016. But possibly even more important, their profits for the year were higher than they had ever been before, suggesting that Under Armour is well on their way to a respectable comeback. Let me know in the comments, what has been your experience with Under Armour? When did you first learn about them? Have you worn their products? Or maybe you've shied away from the brand? I'd be interested to know if your experience lines up with what I talked about in this video. And finally, what do you see for the future of Under Armour? Will they continue to grow, maybe even challenge Nike one day in the world of sports? Or are things just going to get worse? And any other thoughts you have about Under Armour, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.